Good afternoon, everybody. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Liz Halpin, and I head up the Dublin team in Falter, Ireland. Uh, so you're all very, very welcome to the Dublin session um, this morning. Let me just see. So there's four speakers today. I'm going to kick it off and then hand over to uh, Caroline, uh, who is a manager on the Dublin team, who will do a, a look back at um, our year in review. Then myself and Mark McGovern will speak to um, uh, kind of all of the other activity that we're doing into the future. But between myself, Mark and Caroline, we have, I'm delighted to say, Martina Bromley, who is our head of enterprise development. And Martina is going to talk you through a really exciting program of um, activity that we have planned from an enterprise development perspective for uh, the year ahead. I think it was a brilliant session this morning. It's, it's great to see so many people here. It's great to see lots of people smiling up at me. Thank you very much. It's quite nerve wracking when you're doing this, when you haven't seen humans for such a long time face to face. It's great to see people just not on a screen. Um, I know certainly from my perspective, um, as I look at the plenary session and hear all of the national information, it's fantastic then, I think, to have this session with all of the Dublin community. We're all here together. And I know for me, I'm always thinking, what does that mean for Dublin? So what we're going to take you through this morning is exactly that. We'll take you through what those stats looked like, the big stats that you were given at the start from a national perspective. We'll speak to that from a Dublin uh, viewpoint. So you'll get all of that information this morning. But my first speaker, the first speaker today is, is Caroline. Um, and Caroline is going to talk you through the year in review and just give you a couple of those numbers. Um, so I'll hand over to Caroline and I'll see you in a little while. Thank you. So um, I'm sure there are many people in this room who will not be looking back on 2021 with fondness, but they, the infamous they, say never waste a good crisis. And what we thought we'd do is take a couple of minutes now uh, this morning to see on a few critical learnings because it was a, a very difficult time for Dublin last year. And I think um, for us supporting the industry and working together, um, we were faced with some unique challenges, but I don't think we've ever worked as intensively or with as many businesses in many years. And we delivered just under 1,000 training days. I'm sure you all found yourself with reduced teams and having to upskill yourself in areas like liquidity and legal and finance and areas you'd never dreamed about really. So there was uh, real challenges there. But in terms of real positives and things we can work on going forwards, there was 119 participants who went through some really intensive upskilling in terms of digital skills, which we've alluded to a lot this morning. And we saw that particularly in Dublin amongst activity and attraction providers. And also what we did was working with networks across the city in terms of facilitating and developing partnerships and shared learnings in this unique environment. And we, and the feedback we got was there was a lot of great learnings uh, within that. In terms of survival and keeping the doors open and funding, um, we talked about that previously, but 15 million euros was given to Dublin businesses to help keep the lights on and ensure that we come out of the traps quickly with our great tourism product ready. Um, a couple of unusual things or uh, left of center maybe before the pandemic was the gravity or the gravitation towards outdoor dining and just under 2 million euros was given to over 600 businesses. Now who knew Dublin would be a mecca for outdoor dining? But you know, with long summer evenings or even long spring evenings as it will be, this will really set us apart and, you know, we'll have a great vibe and atmosphere within the city with that. And just under three quarters of a million euros was given out in grants for digital that delivers. And that is going to be key around really inspirational businesses reaching out when visitors to Dublin are planning their trips. Now, one thing I was involved in uh, was a number of the networks across the city and the task force was a really eye-opening experience because what happened within that was it was helping us set our strategy. And as we went along, particularly with the likes of winter in Dublin, we were adapting the messaging based on, as you'll agree, the ever-changing landscape in Q3 and Q4. Um, now, we ha I'm sure you had us on the phone um, trying to get information and sharing insights and learnings and we were dealing with over 200 businesses in that respect. And also there was definitely one eye on the long term because obviously we have to be ready for our new reality and we kept going with our destination development plans but always looking at the, the market needs and the domestic 
there. So I think if I was to pull out uh, learnings from these three slides, it was really around digital, which you'll talk about later, but mainly around the sharing of learnings, the collaboration and the working together. Because you'll agree, Dublin did not have an easy time of it in terms of messaging. And I think us working together, getting the, our, our messaging out in terms of what was happening in the city was key. Now, I know there's always a lot of interest in our sales and marketing campaigns. So we had two big ones this year for Dublin. Um, our Keep Discovering campaign, which went for 27 weeks right up until September. And then we went with our inaugural Winter in Dublin campaign. Again, out of the task force, the, the cry from Dublin businesses was, we need to get the message out. There's lots going on. The city is open and it's vibrant. Um, so between those two campaigns, 1.2 million of direct investment for Dublin. We also partnered with um, our colleagues in Dublin City Council around the Week in Dublin Again campaign, which was harnessing and optimising the patterns of local visitors into the city. And also uh, our colleagues within the IHF, we were accentuating message around multi-night stays within the city centre. So that was a great partnership. Now, there's a few stats on the screen to give you the breadth of the campaigns that we were running. I mean, in November, you would have heard winter in Dublin, live in the city, all over the airwaves. And across the campaigns with 500 radio spots. You know, as Irish people, we love our radio. 40 press ads. And Visit Dublin became the go-to website uh, for winter events, uh, with over 320 events uploaded. And we saw a 60% rise in website visits with a 40% increase in referrals. So I think it was a great initiative for Dublin and one thing we're going to be continuing on again with. Our domestic sales platform is our third party campaigns and Paul spoke to that earlier with the likes of Pigs Back and Expedia. These are really quantifiable and it's great to be able to do that and see what it delivered for Dublin, which was over 7 million euros in revenue and just under 73,000 bed nights. So again, if I was going to pull out messages, these campaigns are for you. Get involved with Keep Discovering and Winter in Dublin. It's all about that message. And you saw last year how important that message for the city was. It's easy to get involved using the assets. And we're here always for uh, feedback and advice on that. Um, again, not to labour the point too much, but the destination and really keeping us on message was key. So we did a lot of research and insights and we were able to get that out to you, that you get into the mind of how, particularly the domestic and Northern Irish visitor was viewing a uh, city break and how to make the most of that. We have our brand toolkit. And I have to say, I think we did a template for destination selling. It's got videos, maps, uh, narrative on your neighborhood. So if you haven't got that, it's a really useful piece for selling the city. Um, a new design, very targeted on getting the most out of the work and the partnerships that we have on offer. Brand new photography, um, which Mark will talk to later. But I would urge you, if you haven't updated your images on our content pool, please do. Uh, the likes of Tourism Ireland, all the tour operators, that's where they go to. So it is another channel for you. And with our embracing of the outdoors, digital trails are very popular. And our partnership with Smart Dublin has helped us develop a how-to kit. So if you're mystified by it, that will certainly help. And we'd encourage you to, to get involved in those kind of initiatives. On one final note from myself, it's in terms of celebrating success. And there was success last year, and very tangible ones at that. We were, as a city, internationally recognised uh, by many stakeholders. One I think we're really proud of is the Lonely Planet accolade, Dublin being named among the top 10 cities. Many other cities would give their eye teeth for that, so I think that is definitely something Tourism Ireland have made hay with, and they will continue to do so in the future, and something I think we can all be really proud of. The World Travel Awards, uh, we had some great successes there with the likes of Jemison and the world's le Europe's leading distillery tour, and of course, Epic winning third year in a row, um, Europe's leading tourism attraction. And of course, our very own convention center, um, topping the polls there uh, for leading in that field. Uh, and of course, our culinary offering continues to impress. And we've got the likes of Chapter One and Seoul winning TripAdvisor awards. And last but not least, a uh, little jewel on Henrietta Street, 14 Henrietta Street scooped European Museum of the Year award, which was announced last year. 
So these are independently adjudicated on. I think it gives us a lot to be proud of. It shows the resilience and the innovation and that we're delivering um, what European visitors are looking for. So uh, definitely a great message uh, to end on. Now, before I introduce you to Martina Bromley, who is our head of enterprise supports, she's going to be talking about our program, all about capability um, building. And we're doing things slightly differently next year. Before she talks to that and comes on stage, I'm going to just show you a quick video on the themes of collaboration and selling Dublin. Thank you. Winter in Dublin came about as a result of a number of us from across the city sitting down together as part of the Dublin Task Force Recovery Committee in collaboration with both the Visit Dublin uh, team from Fall to Ireland and Dublin City Council as well as other business leaders within Dublin. What we wanted to do was find a way to uh, connect together and to bring all of the amazing events that happen across Dublin together under one platform. City centres have been really challenged throughout the pandemic and winter in Dublin is a perfect opportunity to put everything that we're doing and put that together into one incredible campaign. What's really important is that Fall to Ireland are using that tagline, winter in Dublin, to market all the activity that's happening across the country and indeed for international visitors that are coming to visit Dublin. The Fall to Ireland supports Selling Dublin were so inspirational and really changed how we thought about how we were marketing. Through the workshops with Fall to Ireland, we really had to look at our language as to who we were speaking to, why they would come to Epic, but also why they would come to the Docklands. We work very closely with all the hotels in the Docklands, so we're all selling experiences now rather than just a transactional visit. And that has worked, I think, very much in our favour, where people can really start to see the Docklands as a destination in its own right. The hotel industry has been very creative and working with the major shareholders throughout Dublin and the Dublin Docklands area. So for example, uh, we did promotions that 15% of our bar rates, there was great PR on newspaper and radio. The connection with Fulcher Ireland and the PR campaign with Summer in Dublin has been very, very successful and has reacted very, very fast to a very unusual and dramatic downturn in business. We've seen the Clayton Hotel Cardiff Lane move from a very corporate, business-based segment into families and couples. So we have went from 0% occupancy, say at the beginning of June, to nearly 52%. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm just going to take you through a few minutes to talk about our priority focus and where we can help support your business grow in 2022. As we know, this is a unique situation. We have never been here before, going from a pandemic to survival to recovery. Over the last number of months, we have undertaken a lot of work to identify and ensure that the supports that are needed for your recovery so really, it's about the right supports you need right now, but most importantly, that they are easy to access for you and your teams, understanding, of course, the day-to-day -day demands of your business. I'd like to spend the next number of minutes bringing you through this program of supports and how they will really work for your business. All the capability supports are focused on increasing revenues and driving efficiencies. These supports for you and your business, in a nutshell, will help the bottom line. We carried out due diligence and we have chosen six priority areas with the aim of helping your business to recover and grow at a faster rate. These are finance and commerciality. While we have found that many businesses manage this area quite well, there is still plenty of opportunities to improve Financial viability and stability, as we know, are the building blocks for every business. Sales and marketing. You need more sales and revenue in the door, and you need to get new ways of getting market penetration for your product offering and your business. So what is that about? The right messaging, the right offering, the right pricing, and the right target audience. Digital has become so sophisticated 
and the pace of change is immense. So we will help you stay on top of this key area, no matter what level of experience there is in the business. Revenue generation, revenue is evolving post COVID and we have built revenue management supports that will work for all tourism businesses, focused on driving revenue streams in both the domestic and the international markets. HR and people management. We all know this is the number one priority for all of you. Tourism Careers is putting together a holistic approach, focusing on recruitment and retention right now. And you will hear all about those plans for 2022 later on in the afternoon breakout session. And finally, climate action. It's so topical and rightly so. And there is a shared understanding that we must all play our part. So from a business perspective, we have developed a number of tools that will help a business on their journey. Falcha Ireland is developing for the first time a tourism carbon calculator, a suite of supports, and a climate action playbook and toolkit, which will step you through those relevant choices you need to make for your business. So we recognize that the delivery had to be different. We needed to change radically to deliver supports that fit in with you and your day job, and of course, running your business. We consulted extensively with you, and we now have a national schedule of supports open to all businesses. What's different? It's easy for you to use. It's easy to register. It's easy to access. You choose which programs you and your teams want when you want them. The schedule will be live and will be populated with best in class supports. You will have new staff and no doubt those that need refresher training so you can help set the pace and plan that upskilling across the year. The national schedule of supports is being complemented by our business support hub, which provides bite-sized self-help business tools from business calculators to templates to checklists and how-to video guides aimed at addressing those specific business challenges and available in a way that is free and easy to access whenever you need that expert advice. The hub will continue to be updated and refreshed with all of that latest information that you need. Throughout the pandemic, the Business Support Hub was a lifeline and so many of you, over 350,000, have accessed the site and there have been over 100,000 document and template downloads. The hub continues to be refreshed to reflect the latest information and expert advice for you and your business. So I would recommend that you absolutely check out the Business Support Hub. Many of you have reached out to say how helpful the Support Hub is. We have six here. Modesty prevented us from putting up all of the others. But this is an important as it is your feedback and ensures that most importantly, we're listening to you and we're on the right track. Finally, we recognize that you are all now at a critical point in your road to recovery. And as we have never been here before, we are looking to try and not only support your recovery, but really accelerate that recovery where possible. So just to recap, you will have the very best of supports available to drive performance across your business and drive sales and revenues. The delivery method through the national calendar makes it easier than ever before to plan your business needs and access those important supports. And the Business Support Hub is there. It's always on with over 50 plus free tools and business guides and bite-sized learning. So we are working with Liz, Mark, Caroline and all the Dublin team on ensuring that the supports are aligned to your business challenges, but as Paul said, your opportunities as well. And by accessing and using these supports, you are ensuring that you will be match fit for 2022. I want to take this opportunity to wish you every success in your endeavors and your plans for the year ahead. And I'll now hand you back over to Liz. Thank you. Thanks, Martina. Um, 
Thanks very much. So we're going to kick into um, the main kind of uh, content from myself and Mark's perspective. So we're going to start with the regional um, tourism strategy. Paul Keeley spoke to this a little bit earlier on, and uh, I'll take you through that in a little bit more detail. Um, as Paul has mentioned, it's a five-year kind of work plan um, with a 10-year vision. Um, the vision for Dublin is very much informed by the uh, Dublin proposition that we have, which speaks to the city centre as the jewel in the crown, um, but nestled very much between UNESCO Bay and um, the Dublin mountains. And what we really want to do from a vision perspective is to bring all of that to life, to bring that whole destination Dublin piece to life so that regardless of the type of visitor that you are, you have consideration and we convert you ultimately to actually come to the city and go to the surrounding areas. So that's the vision. We also want to help people find their way. We want it to be as easy as possible to navigate through the city. We know that the vast majority of visitors that come to Dublin for a city break typically don't hire a car unless they're going further afield. So what we want to do is to work with our colleagues in NTA and indeed across local authorities and across the board just to make it easier for people to find their way around the city. Um, and also we want to um, we want to have wayfinding and itineraries. And you know, Paul mentioned earlier that we had done a lot of, um, or taken a lot of input from industry. We absolutely have, and we've heard you on some things that you really want us to look at. And we know that city trails and itineraries and really moving people around the city centre is key. So that's all part of what we'd like to do with the vision. Paul also mentioned that we did a barometer last year um, just to speak to industry to get your feedback on particular things. And one of the things that we asked there were what were the challenges as you saw them for the next number of years? And here's a couple of the challenges I wanted to pull out because this very much informs what we're thinking of for the regional tourism strategy. Domestic visitors, I think, I don't know, for you guys, but what really jumped out to me in Niall Tracy's slides earlier when he showed a domestic um, international split for the national audience, and then when he split that down for Dublin, 15% of the revenue in 2019 came from domestic. So we could look at that as, that's really scary because we're so dependent on international. But there's also a huge opportunity there for us. We know domestic visitors typically only come to Dublin for events, for gigs, for sporting occasions. So we have a real opportunity to drive that business. And that's certainly what people fed back to us through that survey. Yield is really important and there's just one of the verbatim. So it's not just about numbers in the door. Of course, that's really important, but we want to make sure that we get people to stay longer, spend more. And that has to be a core focus for us for the next number of years. And also festival and events, and I think we're all talking about festival and events, and we're all talking about how you know, important that they are for Dublin. And it's really about creating opportunities and occasions, as much as, as I often say, the natural occurring occasions like you know, Halloween and Valentine's and Paddy's Day. But also then we had winter in Dublin last year, and the aim is really to, to work with industry and local authorities and other state um, partners to make sure that we make the most of what we have naturally and that we work to create new occasions. What does the strategic challenge look like for Dublin? So this is our challenge. We want to have that city destination. We know that the city centre and the vibrancy of the city centre is a core part of anybody's visit, any visitor's trip to Dublin. And we really want to make sure that we work on that. As I say, it's about the high yield. Um, and then we want to have this singular, coherent vision for the city. And we want to work collectively across the entire region, as we call it, to, um, to have that shared vision so that we can consistently promote Destination Dublin. So that distilled down into four key objectives or four key strategic imperatives, if you like, for the next number of years. So the first one is about visitor mix. So that visitor mix, be it domestic, be it international, be it leisure, be it business, we really want to make sure that we get a good visitor mix. And every business is different, depending on what it is your focus is, you'll dial up or dial down. And I think Martina brought you through some really good supports earlier um, as to how you can really target the specifics of what it is you're looking to do for your individual business. We want to reignite business tourism. Uh, Paul Keeley spoke earlier about the, the roadmap, the 
billion euros in the pipeline, and Mark will speak to you about what that means for Dublin, but we really want to make sure that we put our best foot forward from a business tourism perspective. We know we do really well on us, but the business visitor is worth 1,600 euros, so about three times more than the average leisure visitor. So we need to make sure that we have a clear focus for business moving forward. So we will work with Paul Mochler, Sam, Kira, and all the team um, from a Fulcher Ireland perspective to make sure that we um, execute brilliantly on the ground and that we work to attract as many business conferences as possible. We want to give people reasons to stay um, longer and spend more. And I think one of the really interesting things for me during COVID was all of the research that we did. And, and um, Niall mentioned this earlier about generally Irish people, and we think we know the country better than we actually do. That same thing holds true for Dubliners. So there is an opportunity there to get people who live in Dublin or identify Dublin as their home and indeed surrounding counties to actually come and experience Dublin. And in order to do that, we need to firstly generate awareness of what there is to see and do, but then it is about developing those experiences, experiences taking the insights. So taking insights from our colleagues in Tourism Ireland from an international perspective and indeed from a domestic perspective and just making sure that we have those differentiating experiences. And look, we know that COVID has also changed how people want to experience uh, tourism. And it's important that we keep informed and remain informed about things like that as we move forward. And lastly then, Destination Dublin. If that is the one thing that you leave today thinking about, it is that like collectively we work together and collectively we will be better than the sum of our parts. So that is a core focus for us moving forward. In terms of what does success look like and how will we know that we've been successful, we in Falter Ireland um, apply the VICE model, which is visitor, industry, community and environment, and they will be the metrics that we will put in place to track the performance and to track against this strategy over the next five years. So what does that mean from a visitor perspective? Well, we'll continue to um, track visitor satisfaction as we currently do. We will continue to look at visitor numbers as they come in. We want to be in the top three of our competitive set internationally. So we will have really strong metrics in that regard so that we can track to see how we're doing against where we want to be. From an industry perspective, we track how many nights people stay in Dublin, we track um, how much spend, and we know, for example, the Northern Ireland visitor typically spends almost as much as a blended international visitor, so there's a real opportunity there. We also track the number of nights, so uh, Northern Ireland and domestic visitors typically spend about 1.9 nights in Dublin. Um, international visitors, a little over four nights, um, so we really want to extend that out, and again, we'll be able to track that. Community, so, so important from a Dublin perspective. We know that the community is an integral part of the visitor experience. We know that that authentic experience only comes from people interacting with Dubliners. And we'll continue, as we currently do, to track how communities feel about tourism and just always make sure that we're very aware of that. And lastly, environment. Um, Paul Kelly earlier spoke about sustainability and how important that is for the overall agenda. And Paul Keeley then spoke about the SEA, which is the Strategic um, Environmental Assessment, which we're going through at the moment. So everything that we do from a tourism development perspective will be informed by that. In terms of visitor strategy, I've spoken about this already. Um, it kind of high yield, stay longer, spend more. There's also a lot of work being done from a segmentation perspective. So I know our colleagues in Tourism Ireland are looking at segmentation as are we from a fall to Ireland perspective. And from any kind of communications, anything that we develop, um, we'll obviously share with you all of the insights, but everything that we do will be informed by those insights and we will evolve as this strategy is implemented, um, very much informed by sentiment and um, behaviours and what people are telling us. Um, we want to reimagine domestic, which we've spoken about, um, and we also want to look at uh, new segments like families, day trippers. Um, Dublin City Council did a brilliant campaign last year, Week in Dublin again. We were very proud to support them on that, and that whole idea was about getting people from Dublin to come back into the city centre. Our research suggests that people from Dublin typically have a very definite relationship with specific parts of the city, so you typically go along the same footprint all the time and your relationship with the city changes as you get older. So we want to tap into some of those insights to get people to rediscover Dublin. Product development, Orla Carroll was here this morning. She spoke about her session on Thursday, so I won't talk too much about this other than to say there's a huge amount of capital investment on its way into Dublin. 
What does that look like in terms of some of the businesses that we have worked with? Um, we have our surprising stories, which Mark McGovern will speak to in a couple of minutes. We also have outdoor dining that Caroline spoke about for our strand A, which was to individual businesses. Um, Paul Kelly spoke earlier about the Custom House. We've urban animation. We have lots and lots of capital investment. It's a great time, I think, from a Dublin perspective to, um, to, to be in tourism. Just wanted a couple of the key call-outs from a city centre perspective. All of these would have been announced and they're at various stages of development, but there is investment going into some of the iconic attractions in the city all around improving visitor experience. Reimagining the outdoors, Caroline spoke about the Strand A. We also have Strand B, which was the bigger kind of water resistant um, uh, opportunities that uh, we looked to finance last year. So very excited with a couple of the big projects. We have a few in the city centre. We have an amazing idea for out in Hoth. So there's lots of um, ways to support the whole reimagining of the outdoors. We know from COVID that people want to experience urban locations in a different way. So this has given us an opportunity to do that. And then urban animation from a Dublin perspective is in Smithfield. It's a brilliant project. Go online and have a look. But that will just animate different parts of the city and that's so important that we give people visit reasons to visit and to travel across the city. And then destination towns, so be it St. Patrick's Trail out in Skerries or a food trail or uplighting iconic buildings or a heritage trail in the Docklands, there's lots going on, a new event space out in Lucan. There's lots, of go uh, lots going on in different parts of the city, again, to try to increase the, the reach of tourism and to really generate that economic benefit of tourism as wide as possible. Destination development then, uh, Paul Keeley spoke to this earlier, so we have three distinct areas for Dublin. We have the city, and I think a lot of you from um, industry would be very familiar with the Docklands. A lot of people talk to us about that, and I think it's, it's generally you know, received well as a, an example of where we can work very well together. So our idea for our destination experience plans will be to extend out into the city centre, and Mark is going to speak um, to that in a moment. Uh, we also have the coast and the mountains, which will equally feature as part of our destination and experience plans as the years go on. Um, Strategy-wise, we just want to make sure that every region every part of the region gets a benefit, we need to make sure that we work really closely with networks. And again, um, the team will speak about that as we, we really go down to, there's already lots of networks within the city. There's already lots of networks and people who meet outside of that. So we want to make sure that we work with groups that are already formed. We create new groups where are needed. But ultimately, what we really want to do is make sure that we extend the benefit of tourism as widely as we can. I just want to give a nod to the coastal trail. Some of you who have been at these um, sessions of the last couple of years would be very familiar with this as an aspiration that we had. I'm delighted to say that we're about to launch it. And um, we will have 19 signs. There are 11 locations up there. We will have them obviously in English and Irish on the actual signs, but thrilled to say that we will have um, six um, languages accessible via a QR code, which means that depending on the visitor, they can access the content in their own language if, um, if they so desire. And we've worked very closely with the three local, uh, local authorities along the coast and indeed Irish Rail. That's what the signs look like. We're very excited. And one of the pictures here is the NTA map. So we've uh, worked very closely with the NTA and the coastal trail icon will appear on their mapping moving forward. And the idea here, as I say, is that we just tie it all together. So that is our coastal trail. So in terms of activation, as I say, the signs, I see Helen Cole is in the audience this morning. Uh, Helen is the manager in the Dublin team that is bringing this to life. We um, are installing the signs at the moment. There has been lots of activation with industry and we'll continue to do that as we build those saleable experiences and as we work together to sell um, the coastal trail. And I, see, I know Mark is here from Tourism Ireland as well, so we'll be working very closely with our, our colleagues in Tourism Ireland to get the message of the coast as part of a wider city proposition out to international markets markets. So now that's me. I'm just going to finish up by just saying it's been brilliant to see you all here. I will end the day, but before I go, I want to introduce you to the newest manager on the Dublin team. Some of you might be uh, familiar with him. His name is Mark McGovern. He used to work in um, Ireland's Hidden Heartlands. I'm delighted to say he recently joined the Dublin team. And Mark's team will focus on the city centre. So we just want to give that destination a bit of a spotlight this morning. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Mark. Thanks very much.
Thanks very much, Liz. It's great to be here and great to be part of the, uh, the Dublin team as well, um, having worked in Dublin for a number of years in the visitor attraction world. So, look, really excited to be getting started with, uh, with the team. And what I wanted to bring you through was through the, the Dublin City DDP, first of all. This is a really important, I suppose, strategic uh, piece of work that we're looking at. We've about 20 across the country, uh, Paul Kelly, I know, mentioned earlier on, and Paul Keely about all these different destination experience development plans happening across the country. So it's great to have the opportunity to put the lens on Dublin City Centre specifically. And I'm really excited to get started with that. And the first part of that, there's loads of different elements to this, but I just thought I'd just break it down into about five or six uh, little pieces first. So character mapping being the first. So we know Dublin City has so much to offer, lots of really cool neighbourhoods. And the character mapping will look at neighbourhoods across Dublin. So if we look at sort of places like the Liberties, for example, you know, you've got places like Docklands where great work has been going on already. So looking at other opportunities around Dublin, maybe uh, George and Dublin, the North Inner City, there's lots of different parts. So looking at how they come together from a geographical perspective with Dublin, just to see what, what makes sense. Also looking at the product and channel mix, because we know like from a product perspective, we've fantastic hotels. Uh, we've got great attractions, activity providers right across Dublin. So it's really important we take a look at the existing footprint now, especially coming, please God, out of COVID into more positive times and looking at, you know, there might be visitor attractions that are already great, but maybe need further investment or equally, there could be new product we need as well. Looking at different things like the different, uh, for example, the family market, is there enough attractions there for families specifically? And also looking at couples and other types of visitor. We also think channel mix will be very important because you know it's very different now versus 2019 and looking at i suppose you know who are the visitors coming in the doors so that could be you know the huge increase in online visitors and looking at that but also things like tour operators like how has that landscape changed in the last last couple of years i mean it's so fantastic to see metal happening soon and getting those overseas buyers back into Ireland after a few years. But we want to make sure that we show that Dublin is different to what it was before. We have these amazing products that have come on stream and that we're showcasing that. We need to look at the visitor journey and the path to purchase. So from the moment people arrive in Dublin airport, I mean, it's amazing to think back in 2019, I think nearly 33 million people were coming through that airport, which is just phenomenal. So as we make our path back to that, you know, it's looking at the visitor journey from people arriving in Dublin airport all the way into the hotel to check in. And then of course, orienting around this, orientating around the city, really important we look at the different touch points. So as part of this plan, we'll look at that. That will also include identifying and improving city trails. So we know there are existing trails like Dublin, for example, that was already there, further developing that and looking at other opportunities. Uh, I also think tourism networks is really important. Um, so we're going to do a lot of work. We know there's some great networks there already. There's some good work happening, for example, in Liberty's Dublin 8. We know in the Docklands with the DDP that I know Caroline and the team have worked on. You know, so it's it, trying to identify some tourism networks. So I'm going to work really hard with the team to try and facilitate that for you, to try and bring these different neighbourhoods of Dublin City together, to try and get us all cross-selling, cross-collaborating. And then finally, international benchmarking. I think there's a huge amount we do really, really well, but let's look at some other examples internationally of sim similar size cities, scale, population, and also how they do tourism. And of course, it's Destination Dublin, and I know Liz has mentioned about that whole piece around us talking off the same hymn sheet. So it's really important that we're doing that and that we have a shared vision. So we need to create assets for you, and we have done so with a toolkit, but maybe looking at our websites, could we have a Dublin-themed page on all of our websites, the hotels, attractions, talking about the great things that there are to see and do nearby to you. I think some people do that really well already, but maybe there's a need to do that even more now. Um, cross promotion, the nighttime economy, that's like the beating heart of Dublin. I'm so excited to get back, you know, into the city property, you know, having those nights out, the restaurants, like Dublin's unrivaled for that, and people love it. And I know we have a huge amount of work to do there just to, to, to send that message, you know, loud and clear that Dublin, you know, this, and I think that's going to happen now, especially with St. Patrick's Festival officially announced there, the parade coming back, all those types of things. We have the orientation I talked about before, we have Smart Dublin, so looking at digital trails as well and how that can help uh, in terms of collecting kind of data as well that we can use and understand about visitors who are coming to Dublin. And finally, a new suite of photography. So a really good piece of work, which I can take zero credit for because I'm only in the job for two or three months, is that there was amazing photography captured all over Dublin in the past year, like right across the city, the coast, the mountains. So this is really good content for us to have, not only for our own website, but you're free to use that yourself. So go onto the content pool, upload that imagery, feel free to use it wherever you wish. 
It's also really exciting to see the enhancing of stories. I am actually from a visitor attraction background myself in, in Dublin and Kilkenny, and this is something that's been really good in the background happening. So we've 10 visitor attractions that went on what we called our surprising stories uh, grant scheme, and that's put investment into visitor interpretation, foreign language provision, and lots of other exciting things. So some of those people are in the room today, and I'd like to congratulate them for the fantastic work they've done on that to date. Uh, this will mean that when visitors return, um, hopefully in bigger numbers this year from international, we'd have already great visitor attractions, but with much improved interpretation, uh, really good language provision, so that is perfect for international visitors. So 1.7 million of funding. And then in terms of marketing and sales, so how do we drive demand? And I know Paul Keeley touched on this earlier as well. So we need to have that focus, of course, on domestic. Obviously, Tourism Ireland will be doing huge work overseas. But also, we mustn't forget about Northern Ireland, who drive a lot of traffic into Dublin and actually very good spend as well. So that important yield piece. So we also need to create occasions for this as well. So that's where things like winter in Dublin come in really, really good. Uh, so we're going to be putting that, uh, obviously, running that again into next year ongoing sales promotion platforms as well, so providing you know, some really meaningful you know, platforms for people to come, partnerships, voucher campaigns, some of the things that were touched on earlier. Um, so that Keep Discovering campaign will happen again this year. It's going to have all those different layers again, including, of course, the weather, uh, which I always watch uh, avidly as a, as, a, as a golfer, not very good one, but, um, but it's uh, something that we, we all watch at home um, and our families watch. We've obviously got the radio, we've got the print, the online, some great influencers in Dublin last year who produced some fantastic content. So again, we're going to do that, and we're going to make sure that happens over the course of the year. So again, it'll be an always-on approach, as was mentioned in the, in the plenary session earlier, but also so very targeted as well. So once we know from the industry when we feel we need to activate certain things, we'll work very closely with our marketing team to make sure that works really hard for you. And this is just, I just wanted to show this, this is just the Keep Discovering ad for Dublin specifically. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen it. Just in case you hadn't seen it, this is, this is the ad that, that did air and that will air. And no, it won't. You might think you know Dublin, but maybe it's time for a closer look to seek out wild sights in the heart of the city and find stories bold and brave at every turn. Fill your days surrounded by surprising treasures and pass through gateways that lift your spirits and lead to sparkling city nights. There's so much to explore. <laughs> Keep discovering Dublin. So that's the that's the ad. So um, really exciting. And again, seeing the Six Nations happening at the moment with the kind of stadium atmosphere. Again, it's, it's, it's great to see that. So Digital That Delivers, I know this has been spoken about a lot, but I, I can't say enough about this program. Um, in my previous role in the Hidden Heartlands, I did a, a web improvement program. And the impact this made on 40 businesses across that particular region on the Shannon River, improving their digital capability from, from website updates to booking engines and to all these different things. There's so many facets to this. So we do have 45 businesses specifically in Dublin who are on that program. And thank you to all those who have uh, expressed an interest and are on that. But I know it was touched on earlier on, but I can't say enough about how much impact this program could have for you and your business. So we're really hoping that on top of the 743,000 euro that we've already invested in Dublin businesses through Digital That Delivers, there will be a next round of recruitment happening in Q2, probably April, May time. And um, so I would urge you all, and we as a team, you know, we're happy to chat to you afterwards. If you're interested in that program, please do reach out because it's not just, I think we think of digital, it's so broad, but between web improvement, between online booking engines, between connected distribution, you know, delivering content, imagery, video, you know, a lot of this stuff can be very expensive to do. So we're there to help you, to help provide the funding for that. We know it's really challenging times. And I've seen firsthand, I, I mean, I, I lived religiously with this when I worked in the visitor attraction world. And having things like Google Analytics that can track your data, see how visitors are behaving on your website, I can't say enough about this. We've brilliant people working on this project. So I'd urge you all to, to look at this. And I know the accommodation, it was mentioned earlier on, at the moment it's visitor attractions and activity but that we will be bringing accommodation in further down the trail. So I'm very passionate about this particular area. And um, also in terms of in Ireland activity, brilliant to see Mehal coming back face to face, really, really exciting. And um, having been on both sides of the, uh, the table with this, it's, it's, it's great. And I can't wait to see, you know, all the buyers in the room back meeting you all as the industry. So uh, again, that deadline, I think was pointed out is in the next 48 hours. So please do um, sign up to that uh, while we have the chance overseas buyers, fam trips, so we will have fam trips either side of Mehal, 
but equally through the course of the year we'll work with uh, obviously our commercial development team who in turn work with, with Tourism Ireland so let's make sure we get the, uh, the, the best possible product there in front of them. Um, Dublin networking events, really important, so I kind of touched on this before around the character mapping, so really keen to start delivering some networking events for you all. So we're going to aim to do a couple of these uh, during the year where we'll get you all together in person again so we can kind of, you know, start to flesh out some ideas with you in the room in front of us. We'd love to do that. And of course, overseas media farm trips as well, really important uh, to, to, to get those. We have a fantastic publicity team. Tourism Ireland do great work on that as well. So it's really important that we showcase the very best uh, to international media coming in. So this is a great opportunity, and especially coming out of COVID, please God, that this is the chance to, to shine a light on, on Dublin and Ireland. Um, and then from a business tourism perspective, um, I know this was touched on, it's a very top line. We know there's a billion euro in the pipeline that was communicated by Paul Keeley earlier, but we have 145 million already secured for Dublin through that as well. So our business development team, commercial development, convention bureaus, you know, doing huge work in the background on this. So this is really exciting to see, to see, this, uh, to see this happening. And I suppose there's a number of other things happening in that area because I know for a number of you in the room, uh, this segment is very, very important. So the recovery strategy, which will be communicating the strong business development package, of course, the American football. And I, I know firsthand, I remember working at Guinness Doris at the time when the Navy versus Notre Dame game happened and seeing these massive numbers of Americans and stuff coming in drives huge revenue into the city. So, you know, it'd be really good to see that back. And the city charter is another interesting piece of work that's happening in the background where we're looking at providing more value for those delegates coming over. So working between the different venues and attractions and things to provide really good value and really good packages for those people coming over to showcase Dublin as a destination. Um, and that leads me to the final point, which is, of course, St. Patrick's. And I know it was launched yesterday. Uh, and we're really keen to find out from you as well if any of you have your own kind of activity for St. Patrick's happening. Uh, if you could maybe let us know as a team as well about that, because we hope to put maybe some collateral together just to make sure that when people arrive into Dublin, over that period that if they maybe come into a hotel and they're looking for things to do St. Patrick's that we have a comprehensive list of what there is to see and do around that so I know some of you are making huge efforts in that area so we want to make sure that we're shining a light on that so it's at this point I think I'm going to hand back to, to Liz again uh, great to see you all hopefully get to catch up with you a lot after this um, and it's great to be back in Dublin and uh, yeah really excited about it so thanks very much and I'm going to hand back to Liz to finish off. Thanks, Mark. Um, I'm just going to finish up uh, just to say thanks a million, everybody, for coming this morning. I hope you found out lots of information that you didn't know. Um, if you have any questions at all, uh, just please come and talk to any of the team. Most of the Dublin team are here um, for the afternoon or certainly for the lunchtime period. So we're going to break up for lunch now um, downstairs on the ground floor, and then you're back here at 2 o'clock. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of finish on a high, which is, you know, we know how the last two years have been, you know, particularly hard from a Dublin perspective, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. I can see Porig is in the audience here. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And I just wanted to finish what I find a really inspirational piece, which is uh, the American College Football. Tickets go on sale next month. Um, it'll be in August. We'll be welcoming all of these American visitors and hopefully lots of domestic visitors as well. So so again, just thank you for your time this morning. Really looking forward to chatting to you all um, during the lunch break. And without further ado, I'll just finish up and show you this brilliant video, which celebrates the, uh, the event in August. Oh.